Pat, there you sit in the president the president's chair aboard Air Force One, President Reagan's chair. I think this is your first visit mm -hmm. to the uh, Reagan Library. What do you mm -hmm. think? Well, I think I used to sit over there <laughs> 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 on the chairs talking to him, and he had invited us up to his cabin. And we rode home on this plane from Reykjavik, which was the decisive summit of the Cold War, and I can still remember it. See, sitting on the plane like this, I can still remember it, how angry he had been at the results and how we, the staff was sitting back there and how after the plane was in the air a little bit we were coming home it was late at night the the summit had gone over and Gorbachev had tried to bull the president and the president pounded the table and got up and said I'm going home and he wouldn't give in how he came back with a totally changed mood he was friendly smiling and telling stories and here was the greatest summit I think one of the greatest summits of the Cold War, and I think the decisive summit of the Cold War, where Ronald Reagan basically persuaded the Soviets that America under Ronald Reagan could not be broken and could not be beaten. And I think Gorbachev went home feeling that. And Reagan was coming home, and a lot of people were down about the summit having collapsed, as it were. And he's back there telling me Hollywood stories. <laughs> it was, I can't, I just can't tell you. When he came back beaming as though, uh, he just, you know, he just come in from a light workout and wanted to talk a bit. Yeah. It was marvelous, but, uh, you know, uh, getting on this plane and thinking of the places we went to, that Geneva summit, we went to Tokyo together, I campaigned with him in 1986. We went around the country and uh, campaigned. He campaigned hard. It didn't come out that well. All that comes washing back. Yeah, yeah. Pat, what do you think Reagan sets President Reagan apart from all the others? Uh, and, and there's a number of other talented presidents that got a lot mm -hmm. done, but what do you think is at the center of Ronald Reagan that makes him so special even to this day? I think, uh, I think character is destiny first, and I think Ronald Reagan was a man of, of convictions and beliefs, and they happened to be correct. And secondly, I think he was a, a man who assessed the problems of his particular time when the country was in was in a downer and the hostages were being held and, and the economy was in terrible shape. And he sensed what the American people needed and what they needed was a leader that brought to the table exactly what he did. That optimism, that conviction, that come on, this isn't America, let's get up and we can do this together. And he, en he enhanced the country's spirit, he rebuilt its military, his economic ideas, whatever you thought of them, they worked. And, and he challenged the Soviet Union. Uh, and he was, not, he was not what a lot of people think, that he was a bellicose warmonger type. That was utterly wrong. Here's a president who came in calling the Soviet Empire an evil empire and left it with Russians patting him on the back as he walked through Red Square arm in arm with Mikhail Gorbachev. Uh, Ronald Reagan was the president who presided over America's and the West's victory in the Cold War an epical event in history. And clearly, I think even his critics have to agree that Ronald Reagan was an astonishingly successful president and really one of the greats in American history. And to, to be here and to have been a part of that and to walk through this plane and bring it all back is, uh, is wonderful. That's great. One last question. Do you think we'll see another Reagan in our lifetimes? Uh, I do not think we shall see his like again. Uh, I really don't. He was a man of his time. But we have to realize he's a generation older than I was. He was born and raised in a Depression era and a pre-World War II environment. And he had those convictions and the ideas and the simple but true beliefs of the older America. And he brought those with him in, when he was 70 years old going into the White House into this time of doubt and division. And, and, and people responded to the authentic American values and beliefs and convictions he brought. Even young people did. And the people of his generation, he, they reminded, he reminded them of really better times in America and, 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 and better days and better values. And I mean, the enormous amount of young people that voted for Ronald Reagan was astonishing. Yeah. You know, uh, it's not only those kids and then the baby boomers came over, the ones that had given him all the trouble in the 60s at, <laughs> at the Berkeley and places like that. They all wound up voting for him. 
I remember a couple, some fellows, they had a story in 1989 or 90, and two people who just couldn't stand Ronald Reagan, they were sitting in the bar, and one of them said, you know, he said if we built up the military and we challenged the Soviets, we would break them and the Cold War would be over without firing a shot. And you know, he was right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 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 It's, uh, yeah, as I've said, people ask me, how do you summarize uh, Ronald Reagan? I say, you know, probably you can do it in four words. Good man, great president. Excellent. Thank you, Pat. Thank you.